So question 166, a bit of probability and um, some people with hair, long, blonde, perhaps short and brown, I don't know, all sorts of different types of hair going on here. So I think that um, the first thing I would do with this is to draw a Venn diagram to see what's going on. So there's the basic Venn diagram. We've got two sets, the set of people with long hair and the set of people with blonde hair. And we assume that they overlap until we know otherwise. 30 people altogether. Now I'm going to start in the middle here and put that number three in there. That's the number of people who've got long blonde hair, both long and blonde. Then I'm told they're going to look at the people that have blonde hair. So the people that have blonde hair must include these three people with long blonde hair. So that means in this section here, there must be five people. So we've got a total of eight people with blonde hair. Then when we look at the um, next piece of information we're given, We've got 12 people who've got neither long nor blonde hair. So those 12 are there. And then we can fill in this remaining section by subtracting the um, 20 people that we've got here from the 30 altogether, giving us 10 there. So first question uh, that we've got to answer, I guess isn't, we haven't even answered any questions yet. The first question we've got is the probability of long, not long and blonde. So not long, uh, so we can't be, can't be any of those people, but it has to be in the blonde area. So um, there are just five people out of the total of 30 people. Um, so the probability of not long and blonde is five over 30. Part B. Blonde given long. So to find the probability of blonde given long, we use an adapt adaptation of the formula in the formula book. The formula in the formula book says probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So just rearrange that by dividing by probability of A to give probability of B given A equals probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. And then I've changed the A to an L. So I've got and changed the A to an L. L L, because there's nothing special about A and B, they can be anything we like. So that's the um, the uh, revised version of the formula. So when we do when we um, do that calculation, probability of L and B is three over thirty. That's the bit in the middle. And then dividing by the probability of L, which is 13 out of 30, and that gives us 3 out of 30. So what about uh, part C now? The probability of this thing here, what does that mean? Well, we've got long and not blonde, or not long and blonde. So long and not blonde, long and not blonde is these 10 people here. And not long and blonde is those five people there. So they've got, they've not got long hair, but they have got blonde hair. Um, we actually calculated that probability in part A anyway. So the probability of um, one or the other, we simply add two probabilities together, 15 out of 30, 
we could um, simplify that like we could simplify the answer to part a as well but I've left them um, unsimplified uh, in this answer finally we need to determine whether the events B and L are independent and there are two ways of doing that the first way is to compare the probability of B with the probability of B given L, blonde, and the probability of blonde given long. And we've already calculated the probability of blonde given long. And the probability of blonde is 8 out of 30. Now these two numbers are not the same, and therefore B and L are not independent. The second way of testing for independence is to compare the probability of long and blonde with the probability of long multiplied by the probability of blonde. And once again, these two numbers are not the same, and so the two events are not independent. So there we are, that's the answer to that question.